Hello, everybody. That's better. Yeah. So today I wanted to go over um, some stuff that I'm reading with you guys. And maybe you can help me decide what I'm doing. Okay. So like I was talking about um, in the last couple videos, um, I'm reading Jack Kerouac's Visions of Cody. And this is a buddy read I'm doing with Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And this book is really difficult for me to get through. Um, not because of um no i'll just say it i think it's kind of bad so far um if you are a kerouac apologist in the comments below please try to tell me why i should finish this book um i'm in the second chapter right now and um, the first chapter <clears throat> kind of pretended um, it had a bit of a narrative. And um, I'm just not, um, I don't know. He talks about food all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, doesn't really eat but talks about it. Um, he describes very um, everyday things in a very quick, like, observation way, and then will hit a stride with a um, metaphor that lasts probably a little too long. Um, a lot of run-on sentences, the most unerotic masturbation scene I've ever read, and um, I don't know. It's just, it's not hitting for me. And um, one of the things about this that it has done is that it talks about, um, <clears throat> on the back of the book, we have a, um, I guess it's just the book blurb, um, writing in a radical experimental form, the new journalism 15 years early. Um, as Dennis McNally noted in Desolate Angel. Now, the difference, I think, and as the book goes, it might be different, but just this first chunk. Um, this got me just like thinking more about the writers of the new journalism movement. And, um, you know, you have Thomas Wolfe, um, Truman Capote, Hunter S. Thompson, um, Philip Roth, you know, um, Norman Mailer, like you have all of these, um, <clears throat> heavy hitters, let's say. And from what I've read of these people, um, they, they're not just a fly on the wall. They're a part of the story they they matter to the grand scheme of things they matter to how you the reader are ingesting um the story and in this so far like it seems like he could get hit by a train tomorrow and nothing would change in this book. So, um, poor choice of words now that I think about it, given the subject matter, but, um, oops. So anyway, 
Um, if you are digging this book and you like this book and this is one of those books you're just like, oh, dude, no, no. You are wrong. This book is good. Please tell me in the comments why that is. <clears throat> and we will chat more about that. Another book I'm reading right now. Um, this is kind of a chunker that I didn't think was a chunker until I picked it up. And I'm like, this is a heavy book. Maybe the paper is just really heavy. But this is Room to Dream by David Lynch and Christine McKenna. Um, this is kind of like a, oh man, I have really damaged this book so far. That's okay. It's kind of like, uh, a biography on David Lynch with David Lynch giving his feedback, I guess is the best way to put it. And, um... It goes from his childhood through as close to present as this book would allow, I think. Um, I don't really know, because I haven't got that far yet. But when did this come out? This isn't going to tell me. Uh, 2019. <clears throat> okay. So, um, but this is really not heavy on the TM Maharishi stuff, but it does come up because it was a big part of his life dating back to Eraserhead. So um, it's pretty interesting. The thing about it that I don't know if I like is um, you read the McKenna chapter and it goes it'll go for like his whole childhood up until he was 14 and so that's just like a ton of stuff and then we go into David's section on that and he just starts back at the beginning and then goes up to that period and yes, the content's different, but it's going over a lot of the same stuff. So then we get into his high school years, and there's a McKenna chapter on his high school years, like with interviews of friends and family and all this other stuff. And it'll go through all the way until he's ready for college. And then he has a chapter that goes from when he's 14 all through his high school years until he's going to college. And it just keeps going back and forth like that. And um, it is kind of like a horrible case of deja vu that isn't very fun. So I, as I was just telling you this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just read the biography part through the whole book and then go back and read um, just David's reminiscence chapters. I think that's going to be the only thing that keeps me from going crazy because I keep feeling like something's wrong when I'm reading this. It, it like jars me. So anyway, that's what I'm reading right now. If you've read Room to Dream or um, Visions of Cody, let me know what you think about them down below. And um, let me know if you've read Room to Dream. Let me know what you think about that alternating chapter stuff. Um, it it threw me for a, it's a, it's jarring, I guess. But um, and let me know what you think of Visions of Cody and if I should stick with it. Um, and other than that, let me know what you're reading down below, and we will chat it up. So I will talk to you later. Oh, real quick, guys. I'm sorry. Did I forget? Yeah, um, uh, if you go over to my website, IHateMattWall.com, there is a free ebook there for you with story, short stories and poems. Um, and if you go over to my Patreon, you can sign up um, to get all sorts of extra stuff, um, music, uh, stories, poetry, chapbooks, um, the whole deal. And um, if you go over to my Etsy shop, you could get 
Um, my chat books, last month's chat book was P.O. Box 3054, and this month's chat book is going to be a doozy. So um, get over there and check that out. So until next time, I will talk to you guys later.